Good evening and welcome to Match of the Day, which I can tell you at the outset is as good a 60 Minutes Cup tie action as you'll see. The teams that provide that sparkling entertainment are Arsenal, already safely in the Littlewoods Cup final, and Watford. Now a chance for Watford, two in the middle waiting. Oh, bliss it, surely! They're followed no less dramatically by Sheffield Wednesday and Coventry, who kept 48,000 people on their toes for 90 minutes at Hillsborough. Sterling. Yes! Oh, great stop by Abrizovic. And we start the action at Highbury, a much more cheerful place these days, as their blend of footballers, ancient and modern, dominated the first half of the season, providing a platform for the travel. Watford stand in their way with just one target left and very much in mind. Wembley for the FA Cup final. Your commentator is John Watson. Steve Williams is back in the Arsenal team after missing six games with a fractured elbow. He's wearing a moulded plastic splint to protect the area of the injury and that had to be approved before the kickoff by the referee. Williams replaces Michael Thomas in the centre of the Arsenal midfield. Thomas drops to substitute where he's joined on the bench by Charlie Nicholas who has himself recovered from a sprained ankle. Watford keep the side that played in the second half against Everton on Match of the Day Live last Sunday. Gary Porter still playing at number 10 for the injured Kenny Jacket. But lots of attention focused this week on number 11, John Barnes, who has been offered the prospect of playing for Liverpool next season, but who many Arsenal fans would like to see here at Highbury when he comes to the end of his Watford contract. Brian Stevens of Stonehouse in Gloucestershire, something of a controversial choice as referee for this cup tie, because when the teams met here in the league earlier this season, he sent off the Watford goalkeeper, Tony Coton, on the advice of a linesman following a penalty incident, and Watford asked the FA to think again about this choice, but Brian Stevens is again in the middle. A pleasant afternoon at Highbury, as Arsenal kick off at the start of this all-southern sixth-round tie. John McClellan there for Watford. And then Gibbs out to Bardsley. Tony Adams with Mark Falco. Richardson, Bardsley. And now Gibbs. by Richardson. Mistake by Adams, but he made up for it beautifully. Rowcastle. Quinn. Groves. Immediate recovery by Tony Adams. Here's Barnes, forward by Porter, Barnes, Barnes just getting in ahead of Viv Anderson there, who slipped. Porter, Barnes. And he's beaten Anderson. Blissett. Well, that was a perfect piece of wing play by John Barnes. Nobody can uh, say there's a better side in football than a winger going cleanly outside his fullback, as Barnes did there by Anderson. But Luther Blissett couldn't make the most of the opportunity. Sims and Quinn together again, forward by Adams. Rostrum with Groves, Hayes trying to sneak in, and McClellan away. Oh, Allenson! John McClellan in a terrible mix-up with Tony Coton, and Ian Allenson took advantage. 
Arsenal are in the lead in the 12th minute and Allenson didn't hang about. John McClelland appeared to be favourite but he didn't seem to want the ball to go back to the keeper and as he hesitated, Allenson smacked it into the net to put Arsenal ahead. Only his second goal of the season. His other goal was the one that turned the Little Woods Cup semi-final at Tottenham. I wonder how important this one will prove. Good turn by David Bardsley. Blissett, good goal. Simple but so well executed. What would have equalised? And need we say it again, good orthodox wing play. David Bardsley, whose thrusts were at Everton last Sunday, goes down the right, crosses to the near post, Luther Blissett applies the finish to make it 1-1. This is in quite a run of scoring form at the moment. FA Cup goals against Chelsea, Walsall and now Arsenal, as well as the header against Everton. Touch on Barnes. O'Leary is the defender. And Barsley's coming in from the far side, and there's Falco. Arsenal were again somewhat slack in their marking. Here's Hayes on to Quinn. O'Leary going up to the near post now. He got a flick on, and it was scrambled from almost on the line. Well, there's no lack of incident here. Free kick to Arsenal. O'Leary to take it. Goes Quinn. It was Sims who jumped with him. Quinn thought there was some priming there. But a good ball by Gibbs to Richardson. Water. Gibbs again. And then he's lost out to Kenny Sansom. Quinn making the run. a nice ebb and flow about this cup tie this has been quite a taxing week for George Graham that's the telephone that communicates him with the dugout so the referee ends the first half which was an open entertaining one from a spectator's point of view Luther Blissett put Watford level after 23 minutes and somebody protesting at half-time to referee Brian Stevens, and Viv Anderson appears to have been spoken to as he goes off. And the temperature rising a little in the last few minutes before half-time, which arrives with the score here, one each. So the familiar Highbury scene, as two clubs have only met 
first division opposition once between them in the FA Cup this season before today prepare to start for the second half Arsenal have beaten Reading, Plymouth and Barnsley to get this far Watford's victims were Maidstone, Chelsea and Walsall and there's the flag up for a foul by Blissett on Adams Falco. Here's Groves. Williams. Anderson has gone forward with Barnes. Marking him. Now Richardson, he's got support on both wings, Bardsley, and he's got around Sansom, Barnes has come in, oh a fine goal by John Barnes, that's a beauty, and Watford are in front, and the two wingers combine again, and what about this for wide play? England fullbacks they may be, Anderson and Sanson, but Bardsley and Barnes are taking them on this afternoon. Bardsley skipped Sanson, the cross was met by Barnes' header, and in the roof of the net, Watford are in front. Bardsley's cross. And Anderson concedes the corner. Away by Groves. Fifty second minute, and Arsenal at the end of this demanding week. Charlie Nicholas is preparing perhaps to come on, find themselves on the wrong end of the scoreline again for the moment. Here's Groves. And that's a probing run by Perry Groves. He's got uh, Allenson here. And now Sansom. position and the cross will be picked up by Falco and he's got two unmarked Barnes and offside not against Bardsley I think it was Blissett in the middle but Bardsley is finding a lot of room Everton found him a handful in the second half last week Arsenal have found him difficult to contain throughout the match so far this week The Highbury faithful about to welcome Charlie Nicholas and Michael Thomas, it would appear. The players going off are Ian Allenson and Martin Hayes. So a double change, continental style by George Graham. Will it be sufficient? Thomas number 14, Nicholas number 12 to push Arsenal back into contention in this cup tie Falco now wide to Bardsley this is where Watford have capitalised he's gone past Tom oh, he's prepared to take anybody on today but uh, the pass only found O'Leary
Well, it's been a tiring week for Arsenal. And uh, Steve Williams playing his first game in seven. Just wonder whether the fresh pairs of legs that George Graham has brought on are going to make a difference. That's obviously what he's gambling on. Charlie Nicholas yet to get a touch, really. Groves. John McClellan's was the challenge. Arsenal appeal for a penalty, not given. And Blissett chases the long kick. And still Blissett. And now there's appeals at the other end. And referee Brian Stevens again says no. And I have to say that I think he was right on both occasions. Well, there are plenty of points of discussion here. Halfway through the second half, what matters is it's Arsenal 1, Watford 2. Tony Adams for Arsenal. A good cup tie. under 10 minutes to go and Anderson's got to be very careful he's been booked for descent and he's arguing again understandable frustration building up among the Arsenal players this could be their third defeat in a week and the Watford supporters sense victory Rostrum with the kick Bardsley Charlie Nicholas. And Blissett's off, testing the central defenders. Foul this time, though. He just tapped the ankles of Adams, Luca Blissett. Quinn and Williams still prompting this is Nicholas Gibbs at his back got a foot in here's Groves Worked it back to Rowcastle. And Barnes again defending. Sims is staying close to Niall Quinn. There is Quinn. Anderson, Thomas. Sansom. And Arsenal have forced a corner in this. Long assault on the Watford goal. Nicholas goes across for a short one. Gets it back to Sansom. Quinn went down under challenge from Sims. Nothing given. Nicholas! It won't go in for Arsenal. And one of the reasons is this fellow. In fact, he's a very big reason. been nearly all Arsenal since Watford went 2-1 up. Can they get the equaliser yet? On by Nicholas, back by Richardson. Porter, with Falco to his left. in space here he's onside now a chance for Watford two in the middle waiting oh bliss it surely in many ways as Falco holds his head bliss it did the right thing he tried to direct the header back to where the goalkeeper was coming from but he just got too much height on it well 
Graham Taylor and his team, less than five minutes away from a semi-final. David O'Leary. Free kick given against Gary Porter for the foul on Perry Groves. Steve Williams is arguing again with the referee. But Arsenal's best uh, course of action now will be to get on with things, really. Three minutes. Quinn with Sims. Oh, the flag's up on the far side. The referee hasn't seen it. Blissett's away for Watford. Controversy here looming. He's onside, is Blissett. And Lukic is saved. And Blissett again. A goal. But Arsenal must go back to the referee because the linesman on the far side was flagging in the previous attack. He wasn't seen. The referee played on and Blissett scored at the other end. But he must, he's right to consult his linesman because there was a flag. Whether it was for a penalty, I'm not sure. Because the linesman raised the flag, the referee didn't look across, so we never saw it go across his chest. But did he see a foul or not at the other end in the previous attack? Because his flag was certainly up. Now, what does Brian Stevens do here? Involved in controversy in the Arsenal Watford fixture for the second year time running this season, and he has awarded a goal to Watford, scored by Luther Blissett, who squeezed his shot past the man on the line to make it 3 1 and confirm that Watford are in the semi final. But George Graham has made an emphatic protest from the bench and without taking anything away from Watford, I have to see the reason why. Would the linesman have put a flag across his chest if the referee had seen the initial signal? Was it for something else? I can't say that from here. What I do know is there was a flag and it went back down again and at the other end Watford scored. So, Graham Taylor, who was disappointed with the officials here when his team lost in the league, had his goalkeeper sent off, sometimes in football, in a most peculiar way. The wheel turns full circle, and it has done for Watford at Highbury this season. About that, there is no doubt at all. Sansom. Sims is up there again. Sansom wants more. Watford are through to the semi-final of the FA Cup. The managers shake hands. But for Graham Crafter from Maidstone, the linesman with the white hair, and referee Brian Stevens, there will need to have to be a fairly hasty exit because things are possibly being thrown there after a controversial incident. Graham Taylor is saying, get off the pitch. We don't want to incite any more fan reaction. Steve Williams arguing with the Watford manager. He seems to have lost his head a little bit. There's trouble down there by the tunnel. Perry Groves is trying to separate them. Arsenal are angry. It's the end of a bad week for them. Watford, who, to be fair, were two one up anyway, can't be blamed for what happened. They don't control the officials. And in any event, felt hard done by in the same way earlier this season here. But... The upshot of it all is that Watford have won by three goals to one, two from Blissett and one from Barnes. The most influential player possibly Bardsley on the right wing with the first two goals made by him. But everybody will talk about the incident two minutes from the end when a linesman's flag went up with the ball in the Watford penalty area. It was apparently not seen by the referee and Watford made the game safe at the other end. A final score but with plenty of talking to do afterwards, I'm sure, of Arsenal 1, Watford 3. Well, a bit of an unhappy finale there, as John said. Everybody will talk about Watford's third goal. Well, let's try and make sure it's not careless talk, because it costs reputations. The first point to note, as Williams takes this free kick, is the position of referee Brian Stevens as he runs to the left. The second, that without any doubt whatsoever, Sims, that's number five in the yellow shirt, doesn't commit any offence. He jumps fairly against Quinn's challenge, eye on the ball only, and as clean a header as you'd ever see. As we look again from the normal angle and confirm that first impression, we can see how the confusion arose because the linesman on the far side incorrectly thought Sims had committed an offence and flagged. The referee was much nearer 
saw clearly what had happened and quite rightly allowed play to proceed, overruling his linesman's raised flag. It's true that both Williams and Adams stopped, having seen the linesman's flag, allowing Blissett a clear run on goal, and Luther happily took the second chance with some gratitude. The referee then consulted the linesman to check whether, in fact, he'd seen an offence unconnected with Sims and Quinn. The answer was no, and the goal stood, leaving these conclusions. If the referee had not overruled the linesman, a penalty against Watford would have been awarded unjustly. Two, players should play to the whistle, not the flag. And three, linesmen should make sure at all times especially in the nail-biting final minutes of a dramatic cup tie that they do not raise their flag unless they're 110% certain. But it's a pity that incident occupies our minds so much because it really was a most riveting game with both teams deserving much credit. Bob. More about that controversial incident. Arsenal manager George Graham said tonight, my players say the linesman told them it was a penalty, but I don't want to talk about that or about the referee. As for the end of match scene with Steve Williams, Watford manager Graham Taylor said, he seemed to feel I was a cheat and wanted to tell me so. He got carried away and it's for him to explain his behaviour, not me. And this was Steve Williams' reaction, I've got a lot to say but I'm not saying it, my living is at stake. You read what their manager said earlier in the week about the referee. Well that last reference is to Graham Taylor's request to the FA for referee Brian Stevens to be replaced in today's tie as he was in charge when Watford keeper Tony Coton was sent off at Highbury in the league last October. An unhappy week all around if you're an Arsenal fan. Out of the FA Cup, two league defeats, and with their championship rivals from Merseyside fast showing them a clean pair of heels. Both Liverpool and Everton won well today. John Walk was the two-goal star of Liverpool's 3-1 win at Oxford. Ian Rush got the other his 32nd of the season. And Everton beat Southampton 3-0 with defenders getting all the goals. The first and own goal from Southampton's Mark Wright. Paul Power scored the second, Dave Watson the third. Luton's Mick Harford and Brian Steen ended Manchester United's run of eight league games without defeat. Brian Robson scored United's late consolation. And Norwich's 2-0 win at West Ham keeps them in touch but spoils Liam Brady's return to English football. So this is how it looks at the top of Division 1. Liverpool six points clear of Everton, who have a game in hand, and ten clear of Arsenal, who played two games less than the reigning champions. Then come Luton and Norwich, but look at all those games Spurs have still to make up. Also on 50 points, Nottingham Forest, who lost 3-1 at Queen's Park Rangers. At the bottom, Newcastle and Aston Villa had a day off, while Manchester City lost 2-1 at home to Chelsea. Gordon Jury's late goal, clinching it. Charlton also lost at Leicester, where Alan Smith's 17th goal of the season lifted City two important places. In the second division, the glory days are really returning to the baseball ground Derby. Watford old boy Nigel Callaghan put them on the way to a 3-1 home win against Shrewsbury after just two minutes. Bobby Davison, county's top scorer, added the other two goals. With Oldham held to a goalless draw at Millwall, Lips, which took full advantage, John Deans' 21st-minute goal beating Bradford City. So Ipswich swapped places with Plymouth, who lost 2-1 at Sunderland. And remember, only the top two are guaranteed a place in the First Division next season, and Derby are now within a point of leaders Portsmouth, who didn't play today. More news later. Well, now for our second game, and it's on a par with the one we've just seen. It's between Sheffield Wednesday, last time cup finalist 21 years ago, and Coventry City, who've not reached an F. A Cup semi-final in 103 years. There's joy around the corner for someone and certainly for our commentator Tony Gubber. What a fantastic cup tie atmosphere at Hillsborough and at a time when visiting supporters aren't welcome everywhere it's fascinating that Sheffield Wednesday have had to surrender the whole of the Leppings Lane end of their ground to accommodate 15,000 Coventry fans, more than their average home gate, who've added £60,000 to today's receipts for the privilege of seeing their team attempting to reach the FA Cup semi-finals for the first time in their history. And it would certainly be less of an occasion without their colourful presence. Well, Sheffield Wednesday are defending that extraordinary record of being unbeaten at home in an FA Cup tie for 23 matches, a record stretching back to 1973. And their only problem of team selection has been who to leave out. 
In the end, 18-year-old Carl Bradshaw is preferred at number 10. He's the man who's scored in each round of the Cup so far, and David Hurst is named as one of the two subs. Coventry, who won last week's dress rehearsal between these teams 1-0, but they had their influential midfield player Dean Emerson injured in that match, and he misses today's Cup tie. Fortunately, though, number seven, Dave Bennett, is able to start only his second game in two months, and both Keith Houchin and Nick Pickering have recovered from their injuries. And one unusual statistic, the last time Coventry played here, Steve Grisovic scored with a massive clearance against his opposite goalkeeper, Martin Hodge. Alan Gunn in charge of his first match at Hillsborough starts this quarter-final with Coventry in all yellow attacking the goal to the right. And there's definitely a feeling about Coventry this season that this could be the occasion when they reach their first major final. Never in 103 years have they won a major trophy. And Coventry yet to concede a goal in this competition. And so Evans his ball. Sterling takes it quickly. And there's plenty of players forward here for Wednesday. Sterling can knock it into the far post. Grzybic able to dominate his area. Wasn't beaten in the third, the fourth or the fifth round ties. And every time he kicks it, you can be certain that Martin Hodge will be on his toes. Shelton. Bradshaw. Needs two touches. Megson first time for Chapman. He's got Kilkline in front of him. Good interception by Phillips. Forward by Pete to Regis, who's on his own. Coventry are getting players forward now. Here's Brian Burrows. Can he keep it in? No, he couldn't. What a pity. Worthington. Okay, and that's Wednesday's ball. Snowden. Elder brother. Of Ian, who now plays at Everton. Again, Wednesday's ball. So they've progressed down this near touch line with three throw-ins. Marwood. Worthington. Cleared by Downs, only to Snowden. Marwood. Downs is certainly a busy defender. Now Pete. Bennett. For Regis to chase. Madden in pursuit. For Pickering. Oh, tidy defending by Mel Sterland. Who sprinted back half the length of the field. Side. And 28, Cyril Regis, the man who started in non-league football. Coventry's top scorer this season with 11. Nixon flicks it on. He finds clearance. The difference in FA Cup tradition between these two sides really is remarkable. Wednesday, who reached the Wembley final five times, looking to get to their 16th semi final. Coventry, of course, who have never got past this quarter final stage. Indeed, they've only ever played one Cup semi final, and that was in the Football League Cup back in 1981 when they lost. Oh, Regis! Madden and Regis together. And that's the first time that Coventry have threatened. A good long ball looking for Regis at the far post, but they couldn't quite get it over the attention of Laurie Madden. Phillips with the corner. Knocked down by Kilkline, Pickering off his toe. 
Now the linesman's flagging on the far side. The referee's wave play on. Marwood. Worthington. Still kept his feet. So, Laurie Madden with the first important stop for Wednesday. We might have to do a few more of those. Worthington. Sterling. And that's very speculative from long range against the goalkeeper who's six foot three. Regis. Worthington will play it back to Hodge. Hodge plays the ball out of his own penalty area. Give himself an extra 10 or 15 yards. Mexon. Couldn't beat Rath. Now Pickering. Houchin. There's very little on for him here. As always, Greg Downs is available. Regis, Bennett steps over the attentions of Madden, Regis, now Cyril Regis with just Hodge to beat, and he has! Cyril Regis, his 12th goal of the season, and Coventry have done what they've threatened already in this match, and that's breaking from the halfway line with pace. A neat little link up between Regis and Bennett, who stepped over the attentions of Madden, the ball into the path of Regis, who was able to run forward with a clear sight of goal and beat Hodge. So Coventry with their noses in front. And now beginning to sense their first FA Cup semi-final. Little David Bennett. He's been suffering, suffering from a thigh strain and has only played one previous game in the last two months. He hasn't been involved too much in this match in the first 17 minutes, but what a telling ball that was to Regis. 15,000 of them have come from Coventry and now they've got something to cheer. This is Regis. Oh, nicely taken, Regis. Houchin. Pickering. There's an air of confidence about Coventry. No offside, Lloyd McGrath. Wednesday looked for the offside and it didn't come. Oh, and now they're in trouble. And finally, it's Nigel Worthington who brings it out. And Wednesday are certainly rattled. Well, it really was astonishing that the Wednesday defence allowed Lloyd McGrath that much space in the belief that he was offside. Bennett can go forward. Brought down by Snowden, and that'll be a free kick. Well, Peter Eustace in the middle there, the Sheffield Wednesday number two, was a player the last time this club got to a Wembley Cup final. Burrows, no, he steps over it, Pickering. Oh! And the header was by Houchin, the man who got that critical goal against Manchester United. And I think he'll be disappointed that he didn't get that on target. Definitely Coventry's opportunity to make it two. flagged on the far side free kick to Wednesday Peaks head up Marwood Chapman Sterland can't get the better of Coventry's left back or has he kept it in play he has Sterland yes Oh, great stop by Agrizovic from Gary Shelton. 
Sterling kept the ball in play. He cut it back to Gary Shelton, who must have thought he'd scored. But Agrizovic went down to stop it on the line. Downs. Oh, he's trying to play it back to the keeper. Well, having looked impeccable for so long, Greg Downs, he's made two critical mistakes in the last few minutes, and that almost let Chapman in. And this first half now moving into injury time. And as Wednesday come forward through Shelton. Coventry fans that are whistling. Marwood, no free kick, Pickering. And now the referee does blow the whistle. The end of a fascinating first 45 minutes, which really has posed some question marks for Sheffield Wednesday, because they've had the lion's share of possession and haven't really managed to threaten. And the only goal, well, that that came from Siddle Regis after 17 minutes, a goal which may well have set Coventry on their way to their first ever FA Cup semi-final. And if a stranger came into Hillsborough at half-time and looked around and saw all the blue and white, well, he might be forgiven for thinking that this was Coventry's home ground. And as Wednesday start this second half, it's an interesting thought for Coventry that if they do get to the semi-finals, well, they may well find themselves playing that match here at Hillsborough. And the linesman on that far side has signaled the infringement. So Wednesday start the second half with a free kick, and wouldn't they do it enough to score right at the start of this second 45 minutes? They've pushed six players forward. Marwood signals. Grisovic comes and takes it with one hand at the second attempt. Downs, Regis, beautifully taken on his chest, and now for Bennett. Oh, he's kept it in play, Bennett. Snowden committed himself. Bennett. Oh. Worthington's interception with Houch in behind. And David Bennett, well, he's been really influential in this match, hasn't he? He's the man who laid on the goal for Regis. And I think Snowden rather committed himself then, but the footwork of Bennett was good enough to keep it in play. If only he could have picked out Houchin. Houchin beaten by Smith. John Sillett, the Coventry chief coach, closest to the camera, earnestly on his chewing gum. Bradshaw. Megson looking for Shelton. And the Wednesday crowd behind the goal appealing for hands against Peak. Shelton running back to the referee. And there was no expression on the face of Trevor Peak. And at this point. With Wednesday unable to break the deadlock, Howard Wilkinson has decided to make a substitution, sending on both his substitutes, in fact, David Hurst and Chris Morris. And Coventry making a substitution too, sending on young Steve Sedgley, their 18-year-old player. Howard Wilkinson now down in the dugout, that's him, just being masked. Regis is offside, it won't count. And it really is almost impossible for the players to hear the referee's whistle. And I think there's also a little bit of Coventry keeping possession whenever they have it, to waste as much time as possible. Hodge, again, a long way out of his goal. Flicked on. 
Shelton Hunting and Mixon. And Coventry's concentration has finally lapsed and Mexon has put Wednesday back into this match. Thumbs up from Gary Mexon, his sixth goal of the season. The man whose father captained Wednesday in the FA Cup final of 1966 when they lost to Everton 3-2 has given Wednesday a glimmer of hope. It's 1-1. And that came about as a result of a little flick on from Lee Chapman. Shelton was hunting, but it fell to Megson, who drilled it past to Grzevic. And that goal in the 67th minute has lit a furnace under this quarter-final, which was already boiling up. Bennett. Robinson's ball. Shelton, Burrows puts it behind for the corner and all the pressure now is from Wednesday Marwood flicked on, Houchin and that's another corner Regis again defending at the near post. Marwood. Snowden behind him. Finds space for the cross. Away by Peak. Again Regis in the penalty area. Out to Phillips. Who steps over the tackle of Shelton. Here's David Phillips. Now Coventry is streaming forward. It's four on four. Houchin. And makes him the goal scorer take it off his toe think think says Howard Wilkinson with 15 minutes left nicely done and Marwood turns it behind for the throw Bennett waits for it to drop. And Coventry get possession. Bennett. Regis lets it run under his feet to Houchin. Houchin, has he made himself space? Oh, he came off the defender. It's an own goal. Houchin will take the credit. Hodge looks in dismay, but it's Smith. Well, the question... saved it but the shot from Houchin took a deflection off Mark Smith and flew past Martin Hodge and Coventry are back in front dismay for Mark Smith after 78 minutes of this quarter final a deflected own goal and Coventry back in front 2-1 well Keith Houchin knows all about winning cup ties doesn't he the penalty that beat Arsenal when he played for York in the fourth round two seasons ago. The goal that beat Manchester United in the fourth round in this year's competition. And he'll certainly take the credit for that one. Bennett. Worthington. Oh, it's folded in the path of Houchin. It's number three. It's all over now. And Houchin salutes the Coventry supporters. It's Coventry 3, Wednesday 1, and for the first time, Coventry are looking at an FA Cup semi-final place. And these Coventry fans, believe me, are not only celebrating what looks like a great victory here, they're also celebrating a new Coventry City side. A team that's been in the first division for 20 consecutive seasons. That's John Sillett smiling, just went out of the picture as he sat back. 
but who can deny that Coventry deserve this moment of glory, having won away at Old Trafford, beating Manchester United, and now on the point of beating Sheffield Wednesday at Hillsborough. Mexon gives it Shelton back, and it flashes past the post. Well, a little moment to make the Coventry hearts murmur. With five minutes left, Shelton, who's stretched and pushed that just wide of the post. What terrific support. 15,000 fans, that's more than the average home gate at Pipefield Road this season. In fact, they said they could have sold more tickets if they'd had them, Coventry. Total receipts here of about £150,000 and some £60,000 of that has come from Coventry's travelling supporters. And who says that visiting fans aren't welcome at away matches? Oh, Mixon! Oh, so close! But even if he'd scored, surely it would only have been academic because we've played more than a minute of injury time as Mexon holds his head. Referee Gunn has looked at his watch. The players have looked at him, but still we continue. Sedgley puts it into the crowd. Wednesday with the throw. That's gone behind for the corner. And we're now into the second minute of injury time. Grzevich has come a long way, clawed at it, missed. Marwood! Put it across the face of goal, and that's the last act of this quarter-final. It's Sheffield Wednesday 1, Coventry 3, and Coventry have made their own little bit of history. In 103 years of the Football League, they're into the FA Cup semi-finals for the very first time. Now, who do you find as the Coventry hero? Well, I think all of them have been heroes today. Regis, who got the first goal after 17 minutes. But Keith Houchin, the cup winner of the fourth round, cup winner again in this quarter-final with the two second goals. Both of them, though, goals that the Sheffield Wednesday defence will be disappointed to have conceded. John Sillett there, embracing the players. And they'll be dancing all the way back down the motorways to Coventry tonight. The final score then in Hillsborough. Wednesday 1, Coventry 3. Well, I'm sure you'll allow a moment of personal congratulation to Coventry City Football Club. Firstly, for along with Sheffield Wednesday, providing such a splendid tie. And also for breaking the barrier after 103 years in reaching an FA Cup semi-final. Well, that gives me enormous pleasure, and particularly to introduce two ex-players from my years as manager who've overtaken their old gaffer, broken the record, and brought a smile back to the face of the Sky Blue City, and to yours, I hope. It's George Curtis and John Sillett. I heard a quote from you the other day, John, saying, and sometimes your name's on the cup. Is that the way you honestly feel? Well, yeah, you, you've got to, I think, when things happen. You take the second goal, for us, you know, it's a deflection really, isn't it? You know, and it just goes in for you, you know, when we were under a lot of pressure at that stage and bang, away you go. You hit a, a shot at goal that normally nine out of ten times goes wide of a save, it ends up in the back of the net. But, you know, we'll, we'll try and make up for those Coventry fans because the last time we got to this stage, George and I were in the side at Man United. What do you mean the last time you got to this stage? You've never well, been to no, this stage I before. I mean to the quarter-final. Quarter-final. Right. <laughs> quarter-final. And I was marking Bobby Charlton. He got two goals. You were slow then, weren't you? He did have to give me some stick <laughs> over that. So I may have was. got a bit back for the, the fans <laughs> and George. You well, know, you were, I hope so. You were players together and now a managerial team together. But generally, you're pals, are you? No. No, no, we fall out every minute we he go. He keeps kicking my back, so yeah. he wants more and more. He keeps draining me, you, you know. You just can't leave on it, sir. You've just got to do a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, 90 minutes and then... If we can win the league and the FA Cup, he might say, he well might, done. He might he smile might. as well. Just well, one. We've got, to, we've got to lose in the milk cup, <laughs> then we'll be satisfied. Can I just put you on the spot for one thing, George? I turned up at Coventry the other day and I couldn't get in without a tie. Is that the way you're running things there, then? Well, not necessarily, but we do, we do believe, um, John and I, and well, I do especially, that you know, if you dress properly, you come out. You come out to work. If you come out dressed, then you come out ready for work. Much and if you haven't got a tie at Coventry, you don't get in. <laughs> Quite right, too. Now then, before we look at the third and fourth divisions, two important European results from quarter-final matches postponed last week.
In the Champions Cup, Besiktas of Turkey nil, Dynamo Kiev 5. The Soviets are a good bet for that competition, I think. And in the Cup Winners' Cup, Malmo 1, Ajax nil. The second legs in all three European competitions being played this coming week, including Dundee United's UEFA Cup return in Barcelona, which you can see on Sports Night. The Scots won up, remember. Back home today in the third division, the top two both won. Leaders Bournemouth beat Berry 1 0, Mark Whitlock the scorer. And Notts County were also narrow winners, 3 2 at home to Blackpool. Middlesbrough stay third despite a 1 0 defeat at Walsall, but watch out for Lumakari Swindon. With three games in hand of the clubs above them, Swindon were 3 1 winners at Chesterfield, their fourth consecutive victory. Bristol City and Gillingham also won, both scoring four times. One fourth division result tonight, Torquay 2, Scunthorpe United 2. It doesn't affect the top where Northampton are now 20 points clear after they beat Cambridge United 3-0 and reached 100 goals for the season. Richard Hill, who scored their second, has now contributed 31 of them. Cup quarter-final day in Scotland as well. Dundee and St Mirren reached the semi-finals with away wins while Hearts were held one all at home by Motherwell. In the other tie, Little Forfa faced the day's hardest task away to Dundee United but they came within a minute of pulling off an historic win. Only a penalty by United's Ian Ferguson saved the day in a two-all draw. That was one of 14 score draws on the coupons, and with six no-score draw draws, dividends will be low. No claims are required. Well, these are the score draw numbers. 12, 21, 31, 33, 38, 39, 41, 43, 45, 46, 51, 54, 55, and 56. The no score draws 14, 17, 26, 40, 49, and 58. Surely everyone must have got all those. <laughs> well, just a reminder of the uh, Cheltenham National Hunt Festival, which you can see on BBC television on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday next week. It starts at five past two on Tuesday afternoon on BBC One with an item by Princess Anne. And Bob, with his trapped nerve in the neck, and myself with a ruptured Achilles tendon, will not be jumping, I can tell you that. But we will be watching, along with you, I hope, the world's greatest National Hunt meeting. Well, there's football on sports night at 10 past 10 on Wednesday, as well as snooker and racing. Match of the day, we'll be back with exclusive live coverage of the Littlewoods Cup final on Sunday, April the 5th at 3 o'clock. It's between Arsenal and Liverpool at Wembley. And the sort of teams who we've come to expect in Wembley finals. And what I find so refreshing is, with the FA Cup, three unfashionables are bound to occupy semi-final places. And if Wimbledon should overcome Spurs tomorrow, well, it'll be four out of four. And I think that's good for football. So we end a memorable day from which I shall reflect on three things above all. Firstly, of Graham Taylor. When his team were leading 2-1 in the second half, he actually retrieved the ball and got it back into play quickly. Second, the moment when the Arsenal player who makes more headlines than the rest put together missed the real chance to put his team level and finally, the joy of Coventry's Keith Hoochin. Two goals only so far this season, but his two today found 103 years of FA Cup endeavour. Bob and me, good night to you.